cravings are brutal, flat out. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that ketosis will kill your cravings. But I'm not just gonna say that blindly, I wanna address it with some science and explain the hormones and explain the insulin response so that you understand why ketosis obliterates your cravings. And as always, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can see two to four videos per week totally helping you get on the path to being the best version of yourself. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you click on the bell and turn on notifications so that you see whenever I go live or whenever I post a video. So in this video, I wanna address the three ways that ketosis kills your cravings. I'm gonna jump right into the gist of it. The first one is simple, and you probably know this, and it's the fact that ketosis affects your blood sugar in a very, very positive way. But you have to understand how blood sugar works in the first place. Every time you consume carbohydrates, like if you're eating just a traditional everyday diet, you are going to have a rise in blood sugar. And that's normal, it's supposed to. You have your blood glucose that elevates. Then your body secretes insulin and it takes that glucose and it puts it into the cell. Once the glucose goes into the cell, you have this massive eradication of the glucose that was in your bloodstream. So now it's gone. So your body does what it does best. It tries to find balance and it triggers you to crave more carbohydrates to get that blood sugar up again. That way you're not constantly having these big ups and downs. Well, the fact of the matter is, you're always gonna have these peaks and these valleys whenever you have high carbohydrate consumption, plain and simple. And there's no denying that ketosis has, well, a lack of carbohydrate consumption. So you're not going to be having those big swings. Now again, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. A simple Wikipedia search is gonna tell you that. But I wanna focus on the two hormonal reasons that ketosis obliterates and totally abolishes your cravings. So let's get to it. The number two reason that ketosis kills cravings and the number one hormonal reason is something known as cholecystokinin. And if you've watched my videos, you see that I talk about that a lot, but I never go into really intricate detail about what it is. You see, cholecystokinin, or in this case, I'm gonna call it CCK, is a hormone that is secreted after you eat. And it's not the job of CCK to really tell you that you're full, it's more so the job of CCK to trigger the digestion process to begin. You see, CCK does a couple of things. It's secreted in the gastrointestinal tract, but it's also secreted by the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system is a gut nervous system that communicates directly with your brain. It's also been referred to as the second brain because it is so robust and so similar to our first brain. Now, the reason that that's important is because it has a direct line of communication with the hypothalamus. So when we're full and our levels of CCK increase, it tells the brain that it's time to stop eating but it tells the brain that it's time to stop eating because CCK primarily tells the body to start producing digestive enzymes and to start producing bile. And the body doesn't really like to multitask when it comes to things like that. You see, if it's time to start digesting food, then the body doesn't want to be consuming more food. So that's why CCK plays a big role there. Well, in addition to telling the brain to tell you to stop eating, it also slows down the emptying of the contents of your stomach. You see, for instance, if you're full, then your body's not gonna wanna just evacuate all the contents of the stomach into the intestinal tract. That'd be way too hard to digest. So it's the job of CCK to say, hey, put on the brakes for a second and drip this food into the small intestine so that we can actually utilize it and absorb it. So we want more CCK. Now, where does this fall in place with ketosis? Well, in order for all this to make sense, I have to reference a quick study. Normally, when you diet or when you lose weight, your levels of CCK decrease quite rapidly. But this study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that there are some interesting things when ketosis was applied. You see, what they did is they took participants and they put them on a diet for about eight weeks. Okay? They had them lose weight and then they measured their levels of CCK. They found, of course, their CCK levels had dropped as they lost weight. But then what they did is they injected them with CCK. And when they injected them with CCK, they found that they stopped eating. They didn't have a desire to eat. Okay, so first and foremost, part one of two of this study shows that CCK does in fact have a direct correlation as pertains to our diet and how much we wanna consume. But here's the part two that was really interesting. After eight weeks of losing weight and lower CCK levels, they put these participants on a keto diet for one week. And one week of a keto diet restored their CCK levels back up to what it was before they ever lost weight. So yes, ketosis gets your CCK levels up high so that your body can slow down on the cravings and actually burn more fat. All right, now let's talk about the second hormone. And this is one you may have heard of before, at least in passing. It's known as ghrelin, also known as the hunger hormone. Now, ghrelin is released whenever our stomach is empty. So ghrelin, in a sense, is really the opposite of cholecystokinin. 
And it's simply because it's a peptide hormone that is secreted in our gastrointestinal tract. Okay, and a peptide hormone can also be what's called a neuropeptide, which means it has, again, a direct line of communication from the gut to the brain. Now, in this case, ghrelin tells our brain, hey, this stomach is empty and this guy needs to eat. So it tells our body, start eating, start inducing cravings. Well, what does this have to do with ketosis in a diet? Well, in this case, I have to reference yet another study. This study was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And what it looked at was 39 diabetic patients that performed eight weeks of a ketogenic diet. Well, they were trying to look at sort of the inverse relationship between ghrelin and ketosis. Since a lot of times when you diet, your ghrelin levels increase, simply because you're eating less food, your metabolism might be speeding up, and you're gonna be a lot more hungry. So generally speaking, we see ghrelin levels increase and everyone get hungry. But on this keto diet, they found that there was a decrease in ghrelin. And consequently, there was an inverse relationship between a rise in ketone bodies in the blood and a decrease in ghrelin, or at least a stalling in the increase of ghrelin. So what does that tell us? Well, it's pretty cut and dry. It tells us by switching over to a keto diet, you have a massive, massive decrease in those ghrelin levels, so you're not gonna wanna eat as much. And if you've been on a keto diet before, you know that it's so much easier to consume less calories. You just have to be cognizant of the fact that those fats are dense and it is easy to overeat before those hormones kick in to tell you to stop eating. So as always, I wanna hear your thoughts. I wanna hear what you wanna hear about and I wanna hear what you think would be interesting for future videos. So make sure you comment below and let me know. And as always, keep it locked in here on the TDL channel, and I'll see you in the next video.